Oh, he's going old school. Yep. Now, he's, if we're going old school, he's got to do it John Hall style. Now, John Hall was our assistant starter for years. And he would walk down to turn four with the lineup in his hand and skip backwards as he lined them up. For those of you who were here during that time, you, remember, you know what I'm talking about. And he always had those shorts on, so Kyle was already halfway there, just didn't walk down to turn four and skip backwards. That was back when uh, they didn't even have radios between the drivers. All right, field is set, 25 laps. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 Whiskey Tango Foxtrot 25 is about to begin as they get ready off of turn number four. The greens are out and we're underway. Mark Cooley will set the pace and it turns one and two. Benoit and Bowman double wide for a second in our final two corners. Caleb Marku will lead at lap number one. Charlie Rose and Dick Benoit, Jerry Degas-Barry all fighting for position underneath the zero of Bowman as they head down into turn numbers one and two. The blue, the teal and white number 95, that's Dick Benoit. And the 77 is Jerry Degas-Barry Jr. As they come off at turn number four. And here comes Charlie Rose down to the inside looking for second underneath the 24 of Doug Benoit. Rose able to take the spot away from Benoit as Degas Barry and Dick Benoit are double wide behind them for the fourth position. Degas Barry able to cheek it out by about half a car length ahead of Doug Benoit. Now he works on Benoit's number 24 to the back straightaway. And look at Dick Benoit, three wide down into three as Degas Barry hugs the bottom lane. We've got a battle up front. Caleb Marku on the inside. Here comes the 20 of Charlie Rose up top. They roll down off of turn number two, and Rose looking for the lead. Degas Barry up to third now, closing in on the top two. Degas Barry finds himself minuscule seconds behind. Kayla Marku for the second position. Rose out in front by half a car length. Freddie Estelle and Doug Benoit a little deeper in the field doing battle for that fifth position, but off of turn number four, it's a two-car dogfight between Rose and Marku for the lead. Right, Caleb doing a good job in that Paul Davis, number 18, holding on on the inside, but Charlie just a little bit too strong, sets the pace down the back, straight away into turn number three. Jerry D working the outside off of four. And Jerry D will find himself third. Dick Benoit fourth, Freddie Estelle in that fifth spot. But Charlie Rose trying to build some momentum ahead of tomorrow night's late model feature where he is fighting for another championship off of turn number four. He leads at lap number eight. Field stretching themselves out a little bit. Rose able to set the pace. Jerry D trying to throw it hard on the inside of Mark, who he makes it nerf bar to nerf bar, and Jerry D will take the spot away from the youngster. Benoit Estelle, your top five. Doug Benoit, Jacob Burns, round out your top seven with Charlie Rose leading the charge in a three and four. Now here's an interesting point to ponder, and it, it got me thinking with Charlie Rose leading. When Jared Cadero won the race, his best time was a 15.772. Charlie's best time is a 15.779. Seven one thousandths of a second, but Jared was quicker. Of course, he's also used to the car better. Battle for fourth, Dick Benoit and Freddie Estelle racing side by side. As they come off of turn number four, Freddie's got the advantage by a nose down into turn number one. Jerry D now chasing Charlie Rose at the front of the field off of turn number four. Rose will hang on the lead, 13 down, 12 laps to go. Look at Freddie Estelle and Dick Benoit doing battle deeper in the field. They are wheel to wheel to the back straightaway. We are at the halfway point as they roll down into turns three and four down for lap number 14. Jerry D continues to sit about two car lengths behind and Freddie and Dick really having some fun out there racing each other. They are pushing each other around there like they're back in the post stock days. Rose 
I'm going to pull away from Jerry D a little bit. Yeah, Benoit and Freddie Estelle is still having some fun into turns one and two. A little deeper in the field. Balmain and Richie Helger fighting for that final spot. Nine laps to go. Rose is still your leader. Yeah, putting out some consistent laps, and he has now finally bettered what Jared did in a 15-7-4-6. Now it's a 4-2. So the more comfortable Charlie gets in that car, the faster he goes, but he's got it because he's got J.D. right up on his tail. 18 laps up on the board this time. And Jerry just can't close in the gap. Freddie Estelle working over Caleb Marku. Gets a nose up underneath, looking for third down off of turn number two. Caleb's done a tremendous yes, job. He has. Caleb worked in the uh, Pure Sox for just a season before moving up to the sportsman, but man, he is really hanging on well with these veterans. Less than five to go. As Dane Saratelli working the zero of Greg Balmain. Yeah, and man. we got some damage on yeah. Dick Benoit's number yeah. 95. Dick Benoit got into Kayla Marku about a lap ago. Off the corner they come, 22 are complete. Charlie Rose and Jerry DeGasparri. Two drivers that have raced a lot of laps against each other and have become good friends through it all. Two laps to go. Couple of lap cars ahead of your leaders. Can that be an issue? Balmain and Saratelli in front of your leaders. I wonder how Dick Benoit can still see out of his car. Oh, he can see just fine. Off of four, white flag is out. Balmain stays high on the racetrack as Charlie dives down to the inside. Here comes Jerry right up on the tail, gives him a tap, contact. Charlie saves it down the back straight away into three and four. Jerry playing taps off of turn number four, but Charlie Rose picks up the win. Jerry in for second. Freddie Estelle third, Caleb Marco fourth, and Dick Benoit rounding out the top five. Your 2023 Whiskey Tango Foxcraft is completed. And how about a round of applause for Charlie Rose? Kind of dropped a little bit, but Charlie's a wheel man and he took it home for me tonight. You do know that he went faster than you did. Don't tell me that. I just did. Oh, man. Not by much. But he did go faster. All right. I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. Charlie Rose getting ready to climb out of the car. We're trying to get some gentlemen. Yeah. Charlie, congratulations. <laughs> I haven't seen you climb out of a car with that kind of a smile in a long time. That was fun. That was fun. Jerry banged me up on the last lap day. I thought I was going to the infield, hanging on left and right. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> I got to thank Jared, man. He uh, come by Saturday and said, hey, you want to drive this next week? And I said, sure. His dad used to work on my cars years and years ago before he was born. And uh, he said, if I put anybody in it, I'm going to put you in it. And I'm glad he did. <laughs> it looked like a lot of fun out there. It was. It was a blast. I was just worried about this guy behind me, this prick. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what I said when he was bagging me in the back bumper coming out of two. What a jerk. <laughs> Congratulations, Charlie. A great run for Jared's car. Thank you. Thanks to these guys. Thank Longplex and Pete Roeder and Joey and his dad and Chris Almeida and um, I think that's it. Flagman Graphics. I think we got every Westgate performance and everybody that comes out to support this track and support this event and put this on. That was fun. Now, I do have to say one thing, though. He won the race in the championship. If you didn't win in this car, some people would have looked at you. I was going to be sick. I was going to be sick if we didn't win. <laughs> Congratulations, Charlie Rose. Welcome back, Jerry. And, you know, you may be out of practice from taking the left-hand turns, but you look pretty good out there. I, I got a bunch of uh, practice today at Thompson Speedway, so I was ready. First time, today's the first time I've been in the car since the second week of the season. How do you feel out there? It looks like you were having some fun. It was awesome, you know, and... I, I, I was fortunate enough to run this car last year. We finished third. 
second this year, so we keep gaining one spot a year, maybe next year. But I, I really got to thank Don for letting me drive it, Gil, the whole TTM crew. Awesome people, man. They're just a great bunch of people to be around, and I appreciate them letting me drive this. I mean, we finished second to the tire soaker, so I guess we did all right. Well, it looked like you tried to get them off of two. I did, but I would have turned them sideways, and uh, we don't race like that. So, no, not, not going to happen like that. When we get a win, it's because we pass them clean. Congratulations. Good Thank run. You guys. Thank you. Good to see you. Over here, Freddie Estelle. Now, Freddie, you told me you built this car for you. Did you have this race in mind? Yeah, a year ago, but David wouldn't let me run it, so I had to wait a year. <laughs> how do you feel out there tonight? Oh, it's a workout. I don't know how these guys drive these cars. It's like, it's pretty hard to get around here with these things, with these little tires. You know, driving a pro stock all those years, you want to drive it in as deep as you can. Like you, like you were in a pro stock. You start letting off right about here at the flag stand. It's something else, I'll tell you. It was fun, though. A lot of fun out there. You're going to be sore tomorrow. No, not at all. Still two years shy of 60. <laughs> Great run. Good third place finish. Cool. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, Thank the Speedway, everybody that uh, supported the Friday night races here at Seacock. It was a great year, a lot of great crowds. Everybody should give himself a pat on the shoulder for being a spectator here at the Speedway. Friday Estelle, Woods. So long, everybody. Good night. Thank you once again.